Hey, good evening. Chapter 9 of 1 Samuel. So we're making our way through chapter by chapter here in our Old Testament studies. 1 Samuel chapter 9. So tonight, uh, remember the people, they, they wanted a king like the other nations. And God tried to tell them through his men, said, uh, you don't want a king. Said, he'll, he'll tax you. He'll, he'll send your boys to war and get them killed. Said, uh, the people had to have their way. So tonight we're going to we're going to find old King Saul. Saul's chosen to be king, and uh, I guess uh, next week we'll get to the inauguration, but chapter 9 is, uh, is his choosing here. So verse 1, now there was a man of Benjamin. This is a lot, but it's just saying the background of who Saul is. There was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Becherath, the son of Aphia, Benjamin, a mighty man of power, and he had a son. So here's the family tree of Saul's, all verse 1 is, whose name was Saul. A choice young man and goodly, or handsome is what that means. He, he was a young man, he's a handsome young man, and he was a tall and handsome man. And there was not among the children of Israel a handsomer or goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. He was the tallest kid around. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. So they went out one day and the, the fence is down or something and all the donkeys are gone. And he sends his boy out, I guess Kish sends Saul and, the, and his servant out to go, go find him. So Kish said to Saul, his son, take now one of the servants with thee and arise and go seek the asses. And he passed through Mount Ephraim, and he passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalim, and there they were not. And he passed through the land of Benjamites, but they found them not. Verse 4 says they looked everywhere, and they couldn't find them donkeys nowhere. So when they were come to the land of Zuf, verse 5, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us. Saul said, we better get back or daddy's going to forget about the donkeys and send out a search party looking for us. And he said unto him, behold now, there is the servant, I think, saying this to Saul now. Verse 6, he said, behold now, there is in this city a man of God, and he's an honorable man. And if you're a man or a woman of God, I hope you're an honorable one. All that he saith comes surely to pass. So he was a prophet, a man of God who was a prophet. Or we're going to find out in the old days here that they weren't called prophets. They were called seers. All that he saith comes to pass. Now let us go thither. Peradventure he can show us our way that we should go. Verse 7. It, we'll go talk to him. He'll tell us where we can find them donkeys, the servant saying. Verse 7. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go... What shall we bring the man? He's like uh, customs and manners say if we go see him, we ought to take him a gift. So, For the bread is spent in our vessels. There's not a present to bring the man of God. What have we? I can't go see him empty-handed. And the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver. He had a, a quarter of a shekel of silver. They would give that to the man of God. And he'll tell us our way. Verse 9 is a parenthesis in the King James here, explaining what the, the man of God is here, that uh, before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, see, they didn't have a Bible yet, they went to see a prophet. And he's going to tell us that the, the prophet was called a seer. Thus he spake, come and let us go to the seer. For he that's now called a prophet was before time called a seer. So at the time that uh, Samuel wrote this book for us under the Holy Spirit's uh, guidance, uh, they'd become to be known as prophets. But he said back in the old days, back then, they was called seers. Then said Saul to his servant, Well said, come let us go. you got a good idea there. So they went to the city where the man of God was. And as they went up the hill to the city, they found young maidens going out to draw water. And said unto them, Is the seer here? So it was that time of day, probably getting the evenings, the, the young women, they were going out to get the water for the animals and come back, or, or maybe for the homes. And so they ran into them and said, Hey, is, is the seer here? And they answered them, verse 12, and said, He is. Behold, he's before you. Hurry, make haste now, for he came today to the city, 
for there's a sacrifice for the people today in the high place. Now, the high place became a, a bad term for the people of Israel because it started out as a good thing. People, and it still could be a good thing. It's nothing wrong with going up on a mountaintop to commune with God. That's how it started out. But you know how they were prone to idolatry. So what happened is they would go up to the high places and before long a lot of them were worshiping other gods up on the high places. And that's why when we get on over in the book of Kings, they'll be them kings and God will always say, but nevertheless, they didn't tear down the high places. What, what God was saying is they still allowed that idol worship to go on. But in this case, it was a good thing. This man of God was going up to the high place and have a an eating meeting with the people and they were going to worship the true God. Verse 13, as soon as you come to the city, you'll straightway find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat till he comes because he doth bless the sacrifice. And it's sort of today, I've been, uh, I remember years ago, you ever been to a family reunion or something and everybody's hungry and wanting to eat and you can't eat because uh, they're all waiting for the preacher to come and ask to bless. <laughs> That's what's going on here. And afterwards they that eat, they eat that were be bidden. Now therefore get you up, and about this time you'll find him. Verse 14, and they went up to the city, and when they were come to the city, behold, Samuel came out against them. Now this is 1611 English, it didn't mean he was their enemy, he's coming out against them. He met them on the road to go up to the high place. 15, now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear. See, God speaking directly to the seer or the prophet or the man of God. That was before we had Bibles. So the Lord had already revealed to Samuel that he was going to meet this young man. Now, the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before, the day before Saul came, saying, the Lord said to him, verse 16, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. Now we can flip the TV on, it's 2021, excuse me, I'm behind there, 2023, and uh, that's sort of the role that uh, Benjamin B.B. Netanyahu is playing today. Uh, he's the leader of the people of Israel, and God's trying to use him to save them out of the hand of the Philistines, or the Palestinians, they call them today. For I've looked upon my people because their cry has come unto me. So God had just revealed to Samuel he was going to meet this man and what he was supposed to do the day before it happened. Now the days come, verse 17. When Samuel saw Saul, <laughs> when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, and he's speaking to him again. Samuel looked up, and here comes that young man, tall and handsome Saul. And the Lord whispered in Samuel's ear, or spoken into his mind. Behold, the man whom I spake to thee of this same shall reign over my people. That's him. It's kind of like when John the Baptist saw Jesus and he was revealed to him that that's the Lamb of God. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. He didn't know he was talking to the seer yet. <laughs> Verse 19, And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me to the high place, for you'll eat with me today. And tomorrow I'll let you go. And I'll tell you all that's in your heart. You go with me. We're going to go up and we're going to eat good and spend the night. And tomorrow I'll let you go and i got a lot to talk to you about. And just to convince him that he was a seer, I guess, uh, Saul knew what he was looking for, what his business was. Or Samuel knew what Saul's was. Samuel says to Saul, verse 20, And as for your thine asses that were lost three days ago, we don't have any record that Saul told him that, but Samuel knew it already, didn't he? God knew it. He said, don't worry about them. Set not the mind, your mind on them, for they're found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on you and all your father's house? This is what God told Samuel. And Saul's kind of shocked at all this right now, though. Verse 21. And Saul answered and said, am I not a Benjamite, a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin? I'm just from that little tribe, and I'm from a little bitty family, that little bitty tribe. My family is the least of the families of the tribe of Benjamin. Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? What are you talking about? How can you tell? 22. And Samuel took Saul and his servant that had been looking for the donkeys with him. And he 
they brought them into the parlor and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden, which were about 30 persons. They're having about 30 people feast here. And Samuel said to the cook, Bring the portion which I gave thee, of which I said unto thee, Set it by thee, or save that part over there, because I got a friend coming. He knew it before the, he met him. And the cook took up the shoulder that was upon it and set it before Saul. And Samuel said, Behold that which is left, and set it before thee, and eat it. This is yours, for unto this time has it been kept for you, since I said I've invited the people. So Saul did eat with Samuel that day. And when they were come down from the high place into the city, Samuel commun communed with Saul upon the top of the house. Now, don't think of that this like your house probably is. They didn't get a ladder and go up on the ridge cap and sit on the shingles and talk. And houses back then, that part of the country, you know, you, that was a living quarters, the flat roof up there. That's where you spent most of your time. And they arose early, and it came to pass about the spring of the day, or the dawning of the day, that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up, that I may send thee away. His daylight, and he hollered, said, Get up and come up here. And Saul rose. And they went out, both of them, he and Samuel, abroad. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid the servant pass on before us. Send his servant on. I need to talk to you about some things here. And he passed on. But he told Samuel told Saul now, But you stand still a while that I can show you the word of God. And I know old Saul, he probably had a lot of important things to do. He's got all of his daddy's donkeys. He's responsible for fighting. He's got business at hand. But... Uh, the prophet, the seer, the man of God would say, now hang on, just don't worry about it. You sit down, we've got more important stuff to talk about. I'm going to share the word of God with you. And that's the way it'll be every Sunday morning. The devil will give you all kinds of things that are more important, it seems like, to do than go to church. But uh, the Lord will say, just stand still a while. Everything will be better if you just get and submit yourself and listen to the word of God a little while, and then we'll do another week. See you next week.